on what planet of the solar system is it even possible to lose six to nine pounds of body fat sustainably every single month without ever gaining it back or without having to follow a restrictive diet, counting calories and so on and so on. So you can still enjoy some quality time with your family, a nice dinner with your wife or a client dinner with your clients, your team members, your colleagues, your workmates, right? So you want to be still a social person while accomplishing all your fitness goals that you have set for yourself, especially for the coming year of 2024. So, in case you wouldn't know who I am, I'm Albert Bobbitt, founder of Mythical Gains, and we help entrepreneurs and high performers lose at least 30 pounds of body fat, build over five to seven pounds of lean muscle mass, and double their energy level through sleep optimization so they can be more energetic and productive. But today, we're gonna specifically talk about the weight loss, fat loss, specifically aspect of the whole game. And how we're gonna do that is we are going through all the methods that we use with our clients to do that without counting calories, without restricting their diet. So the goal is to have something that works for you and also tastes good at the same time and you don't have to waste time on counting calories and doing all that bullshit, right? So let's start at the starting point, right? Where are we starting at? Where do we wanna go? So you might be one of these guys over here. One of my clients, how they used to be, how they used to look like, how they used to feel like, <clears throat> sorry, how they used to act like, right? So they had no energy. They had very low confidence in themselves, low testosterone levels, which have led to low libido. They felt sluggish, they were overweight, they were out of shape, and they had this kind of fluffy and soft, you know, body composition, where the fat is much more dominant than the muscle, and they didn't really like how they looked, felt, and performed. They wanted to make a change. You see all of these guys here, so Hunter, Paul, Silas, Hayden, Benjamin, Devin, all of them wanted to make a big change happen in their life. So, we achieved it with all of them, without an exception. So the goal, where you want to go, is athletic, high testosterone, so high libido, energetic, lean, vital, so you can sustain this type of vitality for a lifetime. So we are not thinking about a, like a 90 day big booty boot camp or whatever, summer shredding challenge or all that bullshit, no. We want you to be healthy for decades to come and to be focused at your work, at business, and to be a strong and capable man for your family. This is our mission, this is our goal, and come with me on this mission today. We're gonna complete the main quest of losing fat without counting calories. You need to understand that if you don't want to waste your time counting calories, you wanna focus your time and effort on things which have high leverage and recall these processes. So if you focus, if you manage to focus on all of these very simple processes, then you won the game and you don't ever have to count calories ever again. And weight loss, fat loss, will feel like a fun game to you. So that's our goal today. So let's get straight into it. So if you don't track calories, what do you track? You will be tracking your DMT. And by DMT, don't get me wrong, um, I'm not meaning ayahuasca or, or drugs or whatever. Leave it for the new age hippies, right? By DMT, I mean daily movement targets. So it could be a specific step count for the day. And I know that in the online fitness community, like many people are like trolling with this, memeing with this number, like 10K steps a day. I can tell you, I can assure you that 10K steps is legit, like it works for sure but it might not work for you if you have to force it. So first start with a sustainable target. It could be 4K, 5K, 6K steps a day and stick to it. And if you don't like walking, that's not a problem. There are so many other ways, so many other DMTs you can set for yourself that you'll feel like you have an abundance of these. So like, it could be a distance that you swim or walk or jog and so on. It could be a rep count on a specific body weight exercise. It could be burpees, it could be push-ups, but if you, don't, if you can't do a push-up yet, you can do bodyweight squats, you can do jumping jacks, whatever. 
just have a specific rep count for the day that it doesn't matter at which time of the day but you will do that for sure it's non-negotiable for you it works as second nature so always start with easier habits easier targets and you will be sorted and it could also be like a punch count if you have a heavy back or you're like you know um, shadow boxing whatever so a specific count of punches you want to throw in a single day right so this is number one instead of counting calories you will be setting up DMTs so daily movement targets next one the next one is about food eat big food you don't need to eat less you don't want to eat less you actually want to eat more but you want to eat more of that type of food which actually satiates you, right? So high volume, low calorie. High volume, low energy carb sources. So if we just close up here, you can see it right there. Um, somehow my mouth controller is just misbehaving a little bit. Anyway. All right, so now you can see it. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, grilled vegetables. All of these are amazing sources of carbs because they are so big compared to the amount of calories, compared to the amount of energy they have, you don't really have to count them because let's be honest, you sit down and you eat a pound of potatoes or a pound of sweet potatoes, there's the same amount of carbs that you can find in only 100 grams of rice. So for you, white rice or brown rice even, uh, white bread, Pasta doesn't really make sense for weight loss. I'm not saying you can't eat these because we're gonna get the we're gonna bet back here. So I'm not saying you can't eat these. You don't have to cut these out, but definitely prioritize the high volume, low energy carbs. This would be my number one advice here. And let's go to the next one, which is like directly connected to this one: watermelon and satiating fruits. So. There's one sentence which really stuck with me that I have yet to see one person who got fat eating watermelons and it's really true because watermelons are big as hell, right? But at the same time, watermelons are super low in calories, but they fill you up, they hydrate you, they're full of electrolytes, so you can make sure that the water that you're taking in actually gets used, absorbed by your body, you're not just sweating and pissing it out, right? It has citrulline, an amino acid, which boosts your blood flow. So better pumps, more energy throughout the day, better focus. So like watermelon is literally the fruit of the gods. But there are so many other fruits that are like in big in size, but low in calories. So why don't you eat those instead of sweets? So we are not quitting certain bad or so-called unhealthy habits. No, we are not quitting them. We are replacing them with a healthier alternative. So you have to switch this, you have to make this switch in your brain, you know, that that you are addicted to something, that's okay, keep the addiction. Just change the subject of the addiction and then you are set for life. It's because your addiction won't destroy you anymore, it will actually build you up. So you replace the destructive habit with a constructive habit and this is where the watermelon comes into the equation. And of course, for those who already know me, you know that I'm obsessed with watermelons. But let's move on to the next point, because it's important that you understand all of the processes. So, if you're not tracking calories, what else could you be tracking that takes less time, but actually has more effect on the final outcome? Tracking protein. So I would say the only macro at this point, especially if you're about to lose fat, the only macro that's worth tracking is actually protein. And you want to make sure that you will eat 0 0.8 to 1 gram of protein for every pound of your body weight or for every pound of your lean body mass. I would say if you are 200 pounds, right, let's say 30 pounds overweight and you're at like 25% body fat, I'd say it will make sense to you to eat at least 150 grams or 160 grams of protein every single day and then you will be sorted. And um, okay, but what food? has how much protein, right? What should I eat? What are those types of food which have the type of protein that I'm looking for? It's pretty easy uh, for you, for fat loss, I would recommend lean sources of protein. So lots of protein and very little 
of the other two macronutrients, carbohydrates and fats. So you can actually eat more of that, you can get satiated. And for, for more protein, you actually get less calories. So again, another thing that you don't have to worry about. Let's see what classifies as lean source of protein. So if we just close up to this beautiful chart over here, we can see this one over here. This is lean Greek yogurt, low fat Greek yogurt. Any kind of low fat dairy, for example, low fat Greek yogurt, Icelandic skur yogurt, like skur is amazing. Like I use that for, for desserts, cakes, sauces, even like salty dressings, whatever. I highly recommend it. And also here is cottage cheese, like lean cottage cheese it does the magic. And I'm gonna tell you why exactly. So these dairy protein sources are really good as a desert or in the evening because they have like slow proteins. The slow proteins supply your body with protein for six to eight hours during the night when you sleep, right? This is why it's good to eat them in the evening so you are not feeling hungry in the morning when you're waking up. But let's get back to the lean protein sources. So we have this lean dairy over here. Low fat cheese also comes to the equation, right? Okay, lean cuts of beef. So like you can see in the picture that's a sirloin. But sirloin and tenderloin uh, and many other like leaner cuts, they work perfectly. Or for example, seafood and fish like tilapia. Tilapia, halibut, both of them are amazing. Shrimp, again, it's very lean. I would say shrimp is almost the only lean protein source which tastes good, which tastes juicy enough without too much fat, right? By itself. But for the other ones, I would really recommend like using the right type of seasoning or hiring a private chef who can prefer, prepare these for you or a meal prep service or honestly just marry a Latina who is very good at preparing this food. But yeah, jokes aside guys, remember lean protein sources, what else, right? 95 per 5 um, percent fat content, ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey, amazing, and of course poultry breast. So like chicken breast, turkey breast in all quantities, you can eat these. But yeah, as I said, the diet that you need for sustainably losing fat that can't be boring. It should be sustainable in the long term, it should be something that tastes good. So you don't want to go down the chicken rice broccoli pathway, right? You want to eat a diet that actually is enjoyable and it tastes good and you and you are looking forward to your meals. You're not disgusted by it and you know, then there is less incentives for cheating. Okay, what's the next step? Because you might say, Abrish, I can't eat this food, I don't have time. I have to go to my my office, I have to check in with my team, right? I have to manage my business, I'm working at the startup 12 hours per day, I just don't have the time to prefer these foods. Okay, I understand. You spend a lot of time away from home and you spend a lot of time focusing on your business, just like I do. But we have tricks in our pockets. We have tools in our toolbox, which is called high protein snacks. So these take, I call them snacks because they take less than two minutes to prepare or they are already pre-packaged, right? You take this with you and you're all set for the days. So for example, these protein smoothies, by the way, I have a very, very solid document with recipes for protein smoothies, hit me up for that in either IG, Telegram or Twitter DMs or whatever. I'm happy to send it over to you for free. Um, all right, jerkies like salmon jerkies, beef jerkies, turkey jerkies, amazing. Basically, it's just dry meat, you eat it, you're not hungry anymore, satiates you, and super low in calories. So that's a no-brainer at this point that jerkies are amazing. Even if you like bring them from the gas station, like 7-Eleven um, beef jerkies are actually not that bad. You don't have to be too picky about it or too over-optimized. Just have something which has protein, right? Okay, dried meat sticks, amazing. Whey protein pudding, amazing. Or string cheese, also very good. Or of course protein bars. Always talk about protein bars because you can take them with yourself to flights, right? To business meetings, conferences, to work, whatever you want. And you get your protein sorted. Of course, this is not perfect, right? You wouldn't need that every day, but I know that you have busy days when 
a high protein snack like this is a perfect solution. All right, what else are we doing? Learning how to use flowcharts, right? <laughs> okay, carb timing. So I want you to understand that carbs are not your enemy. Carbs are your friends because they give you the energy to actually move your muscles. They actually stand on the stage and to give you a presentation or whatever, to focus with your brain at work or whatever. Carbs are amazing, but timing is everything. When it comes to carbs, you want to separate two scenarios. Training days and non-training days or rest days, right? Training days, you want to eat 6 to 70 percent of your total daily carb intake before and after the workout. So make sure that you are pumped. Make sure that your muscles are filled with the so-called glycogen, which is created from carbs, right? You get pumped in, you get full, and once you're over with the workout, you maybe wait an hour, right? You feel small and depleted. The pump is over. What are you doing? You are reloading with carbs. So you made sure that the majority of the carbs that you had eaten during the day, they all went straight to your muscles. How cool is that, right? So you don't have to worry about that carb being stored as fat. Okay? So what you want to do on rest days? Because I'm an advocate of only training like two to four times per week. You don't need too much training. We will go that over another video. Why? But most of your days during the week should be rest days actually. And how do you eat on a rest day matters just as much how well you eat on a training day. So on rest days, I would recommend the CDS, the carb delaying strategy. Just basically delay carbs as much as you can during the day. Because then you will be focused. You won't have that kind of food coma during the day. You won't have that energy crash. <coughs> because you're kind of <clears throat> so for that, you're kind of keeping your brain hungry, right? But you're still focused, you're still there, you're still having the energy from the previous day, you're not hungry because you're eating already high protein, high protein, lean protein sources, high protein snacks, just like we were discussing it, right? So you can delay the carbs. Why would you delay the carbs? Because then your body will start eating up your own fat reserves instead of using the carbs for energy. And in the evening, when you eat the carbs, actually they help you to sleep better. How cool is that? Two birds with one stone. And as I mentioned before, it's a part of our systems to optimize your sleep and to optimize your energy levels. So what better strategy could there be if you can lose fat at the same time and also increase your energy level through better sleep than the carb delaying strategy? So feel free to use that on all your restroom days. And of course, in the training days, 60-70% of your daily carb intake before and after the training. And let's see the processes. So there is, I think, one more process we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the 80-20 rule. Remember when I said, I don't want you to cut out pasta, I don't want you to cut out grains or rice, I don't want you to cut out white bread, I don't want you to cut out candies either, because if you like that, eat it 20% of the time. So you don't have to like do cheat meals or cheat days, because you will have by default a system for nutrition in place that you say that, okay, 80% of the time, I will be eating, just like you can see over here, I will be eating high protein whole food. So we can call it a clean eating. And 20% of the time, I will be eating fun foods, whatever I enjoy. A piece of cake, slice of pizza, ice cream, maybe, for sure. I do that too. And just in the past six months, I have lost 46 pounds. Or we can look at these guys over here. Benjamin lost 62 pounds in six months. Devin, 22 pounds in the first four months as a 45 year old. Hayden, 41 pounds in five months. Silas lost 34 pounds in the first three months, then built nine pounds of lean muscle in the second three months. Hunter lost 5% of his body fat while adding 10 pounds to his lean mass. All right? So all of these processes that you have seen here, 
So starting from the big food, the high volume low energy carbs, the watermelon, the timing of carbs, the daily movement targets, high protein snacks, high protein lean protein sources, the 80-20 rule, all of them lead to one place where you want to be sustainable results. Where you are sustainably athletic, high testosterone, energetic, lean, vital, strong and focused for the rest of your life. Because what we say is, think in decades, but act in seconds. So if you're also the type who, you know, has long-term plans and wants to think in decades but act in seconds and get to at least as good physique as one of these guys over here, at least as good energy levels, body composition, focus on their business, in their jobs, then I definitely recommend you to save this video and to copy paste everything that you see over here into your lifestyle. And if you feel like it's easier said than done, because I know it is, then go to the description and feel free to book a free call with us. Only if you are serious about it and if you want to get there and if you want to sustain the results for decades. If you are not serious about it, or if you don't want sustainable results, if you just want to get shredded for a photo shoot and then get fat again, don't book a call with us, right? We're probably not a good fit to work together. But if you are somewhere between 35 to 62 years old, right? You have a business or a high performing position, you're crushing it in your career, but all that time spent being focused on building your business or building your professional life has taken its toll on your health or on your relationship with your family and how you are as a father, then I definitely recommend booking a call with us. If not, then as I said before, don't book a call, we're probably not a good fit. You might get some value out of this video, so feel free to save it, feel free to hit me up for the protein smoothie recipes, whatever, but only book a call if you are serious about your transformation in 2024 and you want to achieve sustainable results like one of these guys over here. So thank you for listening. See you next time.